Hi, today we're going to discuss the most common surgical procedures used by plastic surgeons to improve the appearance of the neck. The neck is important to get right because a youthful neck always frames a youthful face. We have already discussed the different types of facelifts in a prior video, and today's episode will add to it. So if you haven't seen the facelift video yet, please be sure to watch it. Let's begin. Since the very first facelift in 1906, surgeons have sought to improve the appearance of the neck by eradicating neck skin wrinkles, clearing muscle bands, and removing excess fat, with the ultimate goal of creating a sharp neck with smooth skin. But just like faces, necks come in different shapes and forms, and each type of neck benefits from different surgical procedures in order to achieve the best results. The major reason for these differences lies in the underlying anatomy of the neck, which can vary tremendously from person to person. If you want to brush up on anatomy of the neck for plastic surgeons, please click on the link provided below, as this will help you understand this topic more thoroughly. So for nearly a century, plastic surgeons had been aware of these differences in size and shape of necks between different individuals. However, it wasn't until the 1970s and early 1980s that surgeons began to more adequately classify these differences based on anatomy. The dedo classification is one of the most commonly referenced systems of classifying the different patterns of neck anatomy, grading them from types 1 through 6. In this classification, a youthful neck with good contour is labeled as a type 1 neck. Type 1 necks do not require any surgical cosmetic work as they are already seen as being aesthetically ideal. They have no skin laxity, no excess fat, and no banding, and their neck angle, known as the cervical mental angle, is sharp, falling between 90 and 110 degrees. A type 1 neck is essentially the goal of the surgeon when performing neck rejuvenation. Necks in the classification are individuals with type 2 necks. Type 2 necks have excess skin due to early aging. These types of neck can be easily rejuvenated via the typical facelift, which pulls the platysmal muscle and the skin laterally. In doing so, it removes excess wrinkles and the muscle bands. Unfortunately, in some patients, a simple lateral pull is not enough as we'll see with neck types 3 through 6. Type 3 necks are characterized by significant fatty deposits in the neck that blunt the cervical mental angle. Even excess fatty tissue of just 10 milliliters can cause a person to appear 10 to 20 pounds overweight. Therefore, removal of this excess fat can be incredibly transformative. Now, this fat can actually be deposited in different layers of the neck. It can either be positioned right under the skin, sitting above the platysmal muscle, or located deeper in the neck, below the platysmal muscle. Not all patients who have excess neck fat are obese. In fact, a significant percentage of individuals with normal BMI may be found to have fat deposits under the chin due to simple heredity. If the fat is located subcutaneously, meaning under the skin, then removal is straightforward by using liposuction. In liposuction of the neck, very small incisions measuring only a few millimeters are made under the chin and behind each earlobe. Then, a small suction cannula is passed multiple times vigorously underneath the skin, removing the excess fat with negative pressure of the suction. This simple procedure can be performed with minimal or no anesthesia and has a relatively short recovery period. However, if the fat is located underneath the muscle, then it is completely out of reach of liposuction. This is an important point to remember. Liposuction is only effective if the fat is located below the skin, subcutaneously. If the fat is located deep to the platysmal muscle, then a different procedure is required. This procedure is known as an open lipectomy, with an anterior platysmal plication. In an open lipectomy with platysmal plication, a larger incision is made measuring approximately one inch in length. Then, the skin is undermined and the platysmal muscle is incised along the midline. Next, the fat that lies underneath the muscle is removed and the muscle edges are then reapproximated with suture. This significantly improves the appearance of the neck on profile, and it is quite a powerful procedure being able to deliver neck profiles that are even better than some patients have ever had in the past. But the surgeon needs to be careful not to remove too much fat, 
as this can lead to a complication known as a cobra neck deformity. Continuing along with our neck classification, we then have the Dito type 4 neck. The type 4 neck is the most commonly seen by facelift surgeons. This neck type is characterized by excess laxity of the skin and the platysmal muscle. It is characterized by loose skin, wrinkles, and platysmal bands. The type 4 neck benefits from all varieties of facelifts because all true facelifts pull the platysmal muscle laterally. Remember, the ideal neck lift always includes a facelift. However, if the platysmal bands are severe, most surgeons will also perform an anterior platysmal plication simultaneously to improve the appearance of the neck. In an anterior platysmal plication, a short chin incision is made and the skin of the neck is then undermined. The platysmal muscle edges are then released and tied together along the midline using a suture. This improves the angle of the neck on profile. In 1990, Dr. Feldman published a description of a more aggressive anterior platysmal plication, known as a corset platysmoplasty. In this procedure, the platysmal muscle edges are tied together along most of their entire vertical length multiple times, creating a strong lift of the neck. The corset platysmoplasty is a powerful procedure that may be advantageous in some patients, but it also comes with additional risks that should be carefully discussed and reviewed in detail. Next, we have patients with a Dito type 5 neck. Patients with a type 5 neck have essentially a receded chin. A recessive chin can make the neck appear obese or bulky and can severely impact the aesthetics of both the neck and the face. Correction of this issue is done with a procedure known as an augmentation genioplasty or a chin augmentation. There are two major types of augmentation genioplasty, the sliding genioplasty and the alloplastic genioplasty, which utilizes an implant. In a sliding genioplasty, a small incision is made under the chin or inside the mouth. The bone of the chin, known as the mandibular symphysis, is then cut and its lower portion is advanced forward until the chin projects adequately anteriorly. The repositioned bone is then typically secured with surgical screws, plates, or wires. The alloplastic genioplasty avoids any such bone cuts and simply introduces a small implant that the surgeon can size or carve to best fit the patient. The implant is introduced through a small incision inside the mouth or under the chin. Because there is essentially no limit to the size and shape of the implant, the versatility of the alloplastic chin augmentation has made it by far the most popular method of projecting the chin. The most common implant materials utilized today include vulcanized silicone rubber known as silastic, expanded polytetrafluoroethylene known as Gore-Tex, and porous polyethylene or MedPOR. Finally, there is the Dito type 6 neck, which is characterized by a short and bulkier neck. In these individuals, the laryngeal framework, including the hyoid bone, are positioned lower and more anterior relative to the jaw. This severely blunts the angle of the neck on profile and imparts an obese appearance to the individual. Patients with a Dito type 6 neck are not likely to see much improvement in the profile appearance of their neck following a facelift. Often, an anterior platysmal plication with removal of underlying fat, as well as simultaneous chin augmentation, are necessary in order to improve the appearance in these patients. But individuals with this type of neck should be aware of the limitations of cosmetic surgery, especially of a facelift, prior to undergoing any such procedures. Here are some real patient results. If you'd like to learn more about facial and neck rejuvenation, please be sure to join us here on Aesthetic Minutes for our next episode. Thank you for watching.